In part 6 of this tutorial series, we will implement the systems required to cycle through each player within a level and display player-specific information and visual cues. So once we've added all of our players and have loaded into the first level, we will need a level manager to essentially communicate between the player record and the ball controller. So let's start off by going into our scripts folder and let's create an, a C sharp script and let's just call it level manager. And let's open that up and we can get rid of the update function and get rid of this comment here. Now the first thing we're gonna, we, we're gonna want to do is get a reference to the uh, record, player record. And because the player record won't exist in the scene uh, while we're editing it, we won't be able to just simply drag it across into the inspector um, as a public property. So what we'll have to do is in the start, we will have to look, look for the object. So we will have to say play record equals game object dot find. And we're going to find by name, it'll be called player record. And we're going to have to get the component from that player record just like that and then we'll have to set up the first ball so let's create a private method called setup player and our setup script will be in the ball controller since the ball controller has direct um, access to all of its you know position and rigid body and all of that so we'll need a public reference that we can drag in in the inspector for that public ball controller let's just call it ball and then we'll say uh sorry and then we'll have to go into our ball controller and just somewhere we'll need to put a public void and we'll call this set set up ball and it will need a color because we'll be setting the color of the ball in the line in this method. Now during the setup we will have a specified position where we want the ball to start. So before we start the setup method we'll need to specify a public uh, transform. So, transform and we can just call this start position and we want to set at the bit when we set up the ball we want to set the ball dot you know or we can even just say transform dot position will equal to start position uh, start start position dot position uh, in fact we can just rename this to how about start transform 
that sound that makes a bit more sense. So start transform.position. Then we need to make sure we remove our balls. In fact, we can remove we can yeah. Remove the balls uh, velocity and angular velocity. We can just copy that over. Oh, and something that we'll also need to do is set our angle, our starting angle, to be our start transform dot rotation dot Euler angles dot y so whatever we set the start transform rotation will be the starting direction that our angle will be pointing and then now we can set the color of our ball uh, and the line so to set the color of our ball we will need to get component mesh renderer dot material dot set color and for the name ID it will be underscore color and the color will be the color that we passed in here and we'll also have to set the line dot material dot set color we can just copy this line from here just like that and we'll just make sure that the line is enabled so we can see it true and lastly we will set our putts to zero and our putt count label uh, dot, uh, dot text that's right dot yeah dot text will just equal zero just like that so let's just go in back into our editor and We'll just create a material for our ball. Let's create a material. Let's just call it ball material. And we'll just keep it standard white. And then we can just drag that on there and you'll see it'll pop up here. Ball material. And that's what's going to be changed. Uh, this material sitting in here and the color will be if it will let me let me go and you can see our ball changing colors in there and also we don't want to forget to create our ball start transform so for that we can just use a sphere Uh, and then what we can do is let's go over to our ball and then with our sphere selected we can go game object move to view and now this ball is quite big so let's try 0 0.07 yeah that looks pretty good I mean yeah yeah that, that should be fine and just wherever you want your ball to start where this ball is now is doesn't matter because as soon as we start the game our ball is going to be brought uh, over there uh, before the player even sees anything um, and so when you're trying to figure out where to put your ball just you, know, you can move it along to see okay if they were to hit it straight on 
this is kind of where it would go. Um, it's just good to keep the ball slightly above the ground. Um, you don't want your ball partially in the ground. It might just slip through or pop out and fly out. So we'll just have it just above. That's, that's good enough. Uh, and something you could also do um, is in your in your ball controller because right now we can actually see our ball uh, start transform and let's actually rename that now ball we'll just call it ball start we can see it uh, in the game so we want this to be invisible so normally you would disable the mesh renderer to make it invisible uh, but it's annoying having to untick and tick that all the time. So what we'll do is we'll keep it ticked and then at the start, uh, at the awake, we can say, uh, start transform dot get component mesh renderer dot enabled equals false uh, so yeah that's it dot enabled equals false so right at the start we are essentially just doing that making it invisible it's still there but it's invisible oh and also make sure we remove the collider we don't want our ball start uh, messing with that um, and then take our ball and then pass it our start transform and just save scene. So now that we have created the setup ball method in our ball controller, we can now call it from our level manager. So now in our setup player method, we can call the setup ball method we created in our ball controller by typing ball dot setup ball and we can pass it uh, the player record dot colors and the index of that will be our private player index so as each player sinks their ball in the hole we will increase the player index by one and then call the setup player um, method so this will be an integer player index and we will just pass it the current player index And even though player index by default as an integer will have a value of zero, it will be good for us to just specify that that is what we want to happen. So we can just say player index will always at the start equal zero, just so it's clear. And at the very start, we want to set up our player okay now one other thing that we're going to be doing when we set up our player is setting or displaying the player's name in the uh, top right hand of the screen uh, so we'll be doing that there we'll need to have a public reference to a a text mesh pro UGUI and we can just call this uh, label sorry label player name
and it's as simple as just saying label player name dot text will equal player record dot player list with the player index dot name. However, it appears that name is not public. So we'll have to go back to our player record and this should be a public string, not private. That's okay. So in the player record, all these three of these three properties should be public. And so then now in our level manager, we should be able to access the name property. Here we go. Name. Okay. So let's now create that UI element for the player name. Going to our canvas. 2D. F to find. And we'll put our player name, right click, create UI, text mesh pro text. We'll put that up in the corner. Now for this one, we could also put an outline on it. We want that in bold, auto size, max a thousand, minimum five. And can make it a bit bigger than that. Something like that should be good. And because it's in the top right, we want to um, we want to have it uh, aligned to the right. And then we just want to drag this all the way out to about here. So you know, if they have a really long name, then it will fit just like that. You can see here, it all goes down to the side. Just put player name for now. And we need to set up our anchors in the same way. So we'll set this top left anchor. And I'm pretty happy with the way that's lined up. So we'll get our anchor very close to that. And then let's get this anchor, uh, this one here and bring that up and I like the way that's lined up as well so let's put that about there and you can see you know this is like 0 0.98 if you just around these 0 0.98 0 0.88 yeah and then you could probably just that would be set to zero if you want it to go all the way to the end there. And then we can just zero these all off like that. So you can see it goes all the way to the end that side. And we have a little bit of a uh, bit of margin around here. We can actually bring this uh, back if we want. We could set this to 0 0.98 as well. Oh uh, wait, sorry, not so for night. Uh to Oops. Yeah. Maybe something like zero point nine eight five. Yeah, I'm happy with the way that sits. Okay. And let's just disable wrapping so if it gets really long it doesn't end up just 
going down the page and everything. Uh, and we can change the name of this to player name label, just like that. And then of course, in our game manager, we'll need a reference. So let's create our game manager. And add our uh, sorry, not game manager, level manager. That's what we called it, level manager. And that needs reference to the ball controller and the player name label. Okay. So just to make sure everything is kind of all together, we have our level manager, our ball start, our course, our plane, our whole, our whole trigger. I'll just move that down next to the course. We've got our canvas, our ball. I'll move this down there next to ball start. Uh, and you know, we've got all these other things that we need. So let's just give this a test. We can go back to our menu scene. And let's enter in the player name. So just put in Bob, add, start, and here we have Bob up here in the corner, and our ball is red, because according to our player record, the first player, element zero, is a red, red color. One putt, two putts. And if we look down here in the console, and there we go, three putts to get in. Great. Just make sure to always keep saving, save your scene, save your project, because Unity does crash every now and then. So now the last thing to do in terms of gameplay functionality is to create a method that the ball controller can call in the level manager that will assign the final putt number to the player record and call for the next player to be uh, brought in or set up and to check if the last player has just finished and it's time to move on to the next level, or if we are currently on the last level to proceed onto the scoreboard. So in our level manager, we will need a public void and we can call this next player. And when the ball controller calls the next player method, it will need to provide the number of putts that the player who just finished had so that we can apply uh, that value to the player who just finished. And then we can move on to the next player or the next level or end the game to and go move on to the scoreboard then. So now we've set that up, we know where to call it in our ball controller. So here in count hold time, here we just wrote a comment and do that player is finished, move on to next player. So we'll get rid of this for now. In 
and here is where we will call our level manager. Sorry. Uh, do we have a reference to that? No, we don't. So we'll need to create a reference here. Public level manager, level manager here. And then now we can, uh, here, we can say level manager dot next player and pass it putts. Just like that. Now going back to our level manager, in this method we want to assign the previous putts to the correct player in the correct level um, of their, or the correct index of their putts array because um, each item in their putts array is corresponding to each level. So the easiest way to do that is just to go into our player record and just create a, a public void add, add putts. And that will take a player index Oop. index uh, and a you know, put you know, put count we can call that put count and assigning the putts to the correct player is easy from here we just need to access our player list by the provided player index, sorry. Player index and access the putts by the index of the level index. So we'll need to specify that and keep track of what is the index of the level that the player record is currently in. So public int level index and we'll just use that uh, level index and that will equal the putt count and just save that so let's go back to our level manager and let's call that now player record dot add putts sorry and we'll provide it with the current player index and the previous putts amount and the reason why we are referring to this as previous putts amount is because once we move on to the next player, which we're just about to do, we will be setting the putts to zero. So we're kind of in a, in a stage where we are saving the previous player and we're going to be preparing for the next player if there is a next player. So to check if there is another player on the list that needs to have their turn, we can say if our current player index is less than the player record dot player list dot count minus one so where we are taking we're looking at the playlist we're saying how many people are on this list it could be you know three for the count there's three on the list and so then we are checking if the current player index is less than the count minus one, which is like saying, okay, if the count is three, we subtract one off that, which is two. 
So if the current, because uh, the maxim, the la index of the last player with a count of three will be two. And so we're saying if we are, if our current player is less than the final index of the last player on the list, which is the count minus one, so two, then let's load up the next player. And to do that, we simply say player index plus plus, so add one to the player index. So it's going up and we call our ball controller and just say, sorry, not ball, but we set up the ball dot set up ball. So it's important, sorry, set up ball uh, and then uh, we need the color. So we will need to reference our player record dot player colors and provide the current player index. So this player index is now the new player, the next player, because we've added one and now set up ball is now going to, uh, it now has the right color and it's going to set it, re reset it and give it the, the, the color of the next player, put all the putts and everything back to zero. So you can see our putts are now going back to zero for the next player. Now, if, if we are at the end of the player list, then we need to check to see are we at the end of the level list. So we can say otherwise if, if our player record dot level index equals our player record dot levels dot length minus one, meaning we're at the end, then we want to, I'm just going to write a comment, load the, uh, sorry, load the scoreboard scene. Otherwise, otherwise, it means that we're not in the final level. And what we can now do is increase our player record dot, oops, record dot level index one by one and then call on the scene manager dot load scene and to get the name of the next scene we will call our player record dot levels and we will pass it the name from player record sorry uh, player record dot level the new level index so this will we're essentially increasing the level index by one so that it's recorded on our player record and then we are passing in that index to our player record list of levels so that we're loading the next level. And because we previously in our player record said don't destroy on load, the this our player record, no matter how many times we load new levels, it will never be destroyed until we specifically destroy it. And we can just save that. So now that we have completed the core functionality of our game uh, via code, we'll just 
in the editor need to go to our uh, our sorry we need to go to our level one scene and select our ball and drag over the reference to the level manager and then hit save on that so now if we go to our menu and you can see in our player we have three uh three different colors now you can see level index is zero uh, in the inspector because it is public um that's something that a user should not be able to change so if you want to have a variable <coughs> if you want to have a variable um public but not changeable via the inspector you can use a hide in inspector um keyword uh, i like to keep it on the same line but you can have it above that's the default formatting which means that this variable will not be displayed in the inspector despite it being public so now if we go back you will see it will disappear because our level index should always be zero and never set to anything else. All right, so let's hit play. And actually one thing we could do as well, uh, in our level manager, uh, we can debug log this here. Debug dot log. And we can just say uh, scoreboard, meaning all that all of the players have had their turn, and there are no more levels uh, to 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 play. We're on the last level, and all the players have finished. So it's time to go to the scoreboard. So that's saved. Let's make sure our console is here. And let's just say Bob, Sam, James. And now we can't add any more, so we click Start. So we see Bob up here. Oops. That was a bit strange. Oh, four. I'm not sure what happened there. There, are five. And then, after two seconds, uh, we are still on Bob. Okay. Just have to check. So the reason why uh, it the name didn't update is because we should have called setup player here rather than just ball dot setup. That's going to set up set the ball back in the other position, clear the parts, clear everything, change the color. But what we weren't doing is this text wasn't being called. So there's no need to call this again because we already have the exact same code here, except we're also changing the player name text as well. We're updating that which is what we'd want to do. So the way that I, uh, the way that I was able to figure out the cause of the issue is just through uh, something called debugging, which I think is important to learn how to do because in programming, uh, it's a big process of 
making mistakes and figuring out why or where things went wrong and then fixing it or learning from it um, and then just doing that over and over again until it works the way you want it. So an example of how we would figure out where we've gone wrong is to go to the root of uh, where, where everything begins and then just follow the code through step by step and see where it takes us. So we know that everything starts from the ball controller. We know that the ball is entering the hole. It is staying in there for a couple seconds and then it is uh, calling the next player method. So if we go to our ball controller, we know that for a fact because we saw it happen which meant uh, in our count hold time, we're getting to the min hold time, which is two seconds, and it is calling level manager dot next player and passing in putts. So that's where it's going next. So what we can do is if we hit F12 with next player, our cursor on next player, it'll take us to that method next player so this is what it's calling in our level manager and then we can see here okay uh which is we're getting the previous parts we are assigning the previous parts uh value to the um to the player uh in the player record that matches the player index and all of that we know that we should be uh, coming into this area here into this so we're passing this if statement uh, and we are increasing the player index by one we knew that we were doing that as well uh, and be because when we ended up calling ball dot setup again the ball was going back to the start it was doing everything changing color but nowhere were we actually updating the text the place that we were updating the text is up here and we notice that we've just written the same code here. So now we see where the problem is. We never had anywhere in our steps of logic where this method was ever called. Therefore, this line of code was never called. Therefore, the player name was never updated. So now we know how to fix this. And I just press Control L to get rid of that line. Uh, control L actually cuts the line. So if you control V paste, you can paste anywhere. Um, so just keep that in mind. So if you copy something and then, you know, control C, but then control L to get rid of a line, you will lose the, uh, the copy and your new cop, the copy that you'll have will be the line that you took out. So if I have like, you know, hello, you know, world. So if I say, okay, I'm going to take hello, control C, you know, control V, that's fine. You know, if I control V, it's just going to say hello. But if I go and control L, this world out and control V, it's world. Now it's world. So I've lost the copy for hello just to keep that in mind. So now we are, we have the correct method here. We should uh, give this another test. All right, let's start with Bob. We may need to increase the friction or something because I feel like that's sliding for a little bit too long. Oops, a bit too much power there. You could also have a like a shift key which would make rotation a bit faster. There we go, three putts. Moving on to Sam.
sometimes the ball just slowly sliding can actually make for some uh, pretty kind of um, tense moments, if, especially if you're getting very close to the hole or close to a ledge and it just keeps sliding and sliding. It can make for like a tense moment. And then we went through Sam and now we're up to James. Oh, right, and now we have scoreboard. Our debug there has popped up. So before we move on to the scoreboard we can look at making uh, three levels so that we can test that with multiple levels we are in fact transitioning through each level and when we get to the scoreboard stage we can make sure that the total, the, the tally, uh, the tallying of all of the players putts across all the levels are all adding up uh, and uh, all correct.